Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this virtual experiment today. While we normally like to hold this particular experiment in person, due to current constraints imposed because of COVID, we have put together a collection of videos to give you a detailed guide on information regarding the experiment. To begin with, what is DSC? DSC stands for Differential Scanning Calorimetry. It is a thermal analysis technique that can be used to measure temperatures and heat flows associated with the thermal transitions of a material. DSC is a technique that can be used in a wide range of fields, including polymer characterization, pharmaceuticals, and food science. The sample type for DSC ranges from films, powders, solutions, and composites. During the experiment, the sample is subjected to a variation of temperature ranges and the DSC measures how the material responds to the heating and or cooling. The main component of the DSC is the cell, where two discs can be found. One disc corresponds to the sample, while the other corresponds to the reference, which is simply an empty pan and lid. The sample is prepared by placing it into the appropriate pan with a lid. Once sealed, the sample is placed onto the sample disc. We will talk more in detail about sample preparation as we walk through the experiments. During the experiment, the DSC exports information on the applied temperatures and heat flow through the sample. The reference pan is used to remove effects of the internals of the machine and the aluminum pan and lid that is used to hold the sample. The DSC will provide direct information about how much energy the sample has absorbed and or released. While certain machines are customized to suit specific needs better than others, the instrument we are using today is the TA Instruments T0 DSC250, which can be used to efficiently characterize glass transition temperatures, cold crystallization, melting temperatures, and other common thermal transitions. Now that we have some of the basic information out of the way, in the next video we will move on to how we can use DSC to investigate the thermal properties of specific samples. Welcome back everyone. In this video we will discuss some of the thermal properties you can measure using DSC. This section will be specifically tailored for polymers, and even more specifically, polymers that have the ability to undergo a glass transition phase. Commonly used plastics such as polyethylene, polystyrene, and polylactic acid exhibit three important thermal transitions including glass transition, crystallization, and melting. Each temperature is critical in understanding how to process such materials, and next we will discuss each transition and how to determine these parameters using DSC thermogram. First, we will discuss the glass transition phase of polymers. The glass transition temperature is the point that a material being cooled from a molten state will cross over from mechanical properties of an elastic material to those of a brittle material. It should be noted that this is a reversible process, meaning that you can also measure this going from brittle to elastic. Glass transitions can be commonly observed around you, such as a plastic bucket cracking under the influence of freezing temperatures in the winter, or melted down sugar forming a hard glass-like material once it's cooled back down to room temperature. It is important to remember that the glass transition phase is not a single value. There is a starting point, midpoint, and an end point. This means that when going through calculations, it should always be known which value is being used to ensure utmost accuracy. After the glass transition phase, as we increase temperature, the polymer chains continue to have higher and higher mobility. In this temperature range, the chains have sufficient enough energy to form ordered units that allow them to undergo crystallization. For example, think about how cotton candy may melt down but still form a hard paste. While polymers can have a crystallization phase, the sheer number of chains in a polymer prevent it from being completely crystallized, since the entire material will be unable to form one ordered unit. Finally, after both the glass transition and the crystallization temperature are reached, the polymer now reaches its melting temperature. At a polymer's melting point, the chains are able to not only move around freely, but they also have no ordered arrangements. Out of the three processes, the melting temperature is completely endothermic. For this particular experiment, we will be focusing on how the glass transition phase changes as a function of a polymer's molecular weight. But if you would like more information on the thermal transitions discussed in this video, 
Please view the attached link which discusses glass transition, crystallization, melting, as well as other thermal properties not mentioned. For our experiment today, we will be using the polymer polystyrene. Polystyrene refers to the polymer made up of varying units of the monomer styrene. It has many uses in everyday life, such as disposable utensils, smoke detector casings, and license plate frames. Because the amount of units can be varied, polystyrene can have different molecular weights. For our experiment, we will be using molecular weights ranging from 900,000 to 1.3,000. These different molecular weights will have a quantifiable effect on the glass transition phase, which you will learn to calculate. 